Today we're going to be covering things to consider when implementing Sage Evolution. So Brent, you have been a Sage Evolution consultant for many years, you're an hour senior, you've done ample implementations. Yeah. What in your opinion would be the first and most important thing to consider before starting? Well, Jillian, one of the first things that you need to consider is your business requirements. So you need to do your needs analysis. What exactly are we looking for? How exactly do we want to implement it? Another thing to look at is your business analysis. One of the big things about a business analysis, you need to take a look at your standard operating procedures. Looking at these procedures, you need to look for a system, whether it's Sage or any other system, to work with these procedures and not have to make the procedures work with the system. Right. And then finally, you need to do a scope of work with your consultant or with the company that you are working with. You need to run through a scope of work to confirm exactly what you guys are looking for, exactly what will be done and the time frame that it will be done in. So it sounds to me like there's a lot of change that's happening, system analysis that's happening within the business. With that, obviously there's going to be a lot of change management. Do you feel that it is important for people to take that seriously? It's extremely important to take change management seriously, Gillian, because change management is a massive part of any implementation. Remember that as much as you have your people that are making decisions that are working through this implementation and pushing for this implementation to occur, it's the guys on the ground that are getting affected, your actual end users. Not only on a personal level where it's daunting to say, oh, well, is this going to affect my job or how am I going to be able to do the work that I'm used to because they are accustomed to the previous systems that they were using, but it's also because they need to figure out how are they going to work with the system. So it's important for you to, as a consultant, as a company, to work, make sure the change management is done effectively. You work with your end users, you work with the guys on the ground. So that way you gather, number one, more information, and number two, you get a lot more input from them and you have a much positive, much more positive implementation. So um, it sounds like there's an opportunity for op like possible risk to occur throughout this process. Would you say that risk management is something that needs to be considered as well? Risk management is also a consideration. Number one, you have your, your standard risks or your formal risks, so to speak, where you have your um, infrastructure. Is my infrastructure correct? You know, Do I have the right network? Do I have a stable internet connection? Do I have the operating systems or the, the software to be able to work with the stuff that I'm going to be implementing? You know, That's a big thing to consider. And it has affected many companies that I've dealt with. And implementation. Another thing is also dealing with your staff, you know, making sure that people are available when they need to be available, ensuring that you are sending the right information. All of these things can be a risk because it can prevent an implementation from moving forward. Say, for example, you need to do training and then X person is on leave during that time, you know. You've just mentioned training and there's testing and training that needs to be done when implementing any new solution. However, would you say that the two go hand in hand? Yes, Julian, I would. Um, on the massive side of things, you're looking at the, the testing. The testing is where you'll bring in your responsible parties and you would do a user acceptance testing or user acceptance training and run through the system with them. Is it going to work for what they require? Are the procedures going to work in place of the system? And in that scenario, they can actually sit with you and ask all the correct questions to say, you know, um, they can get that face to face to say to you, well, this is going to work or it isn't going to work. And then you have the ability to adjust your scope should you be required to. In closing, I understand that sometimes people are under the impression that go live is by like the flip of a switch. <laughs> but go live actually happens over a certain period of time. Can you walk us through that? Well, Jillian, it is a flip of a switch, so to speak, initially, because you need to, you're working on one system one day and you're moving to another system the next. But go live is by no means a flip of a switch because it involves so many factors. I mean, a couple of the factors that I want to mention is you're going to look at your on-site training, your on-site um, hand-holding or on-the-job training where you're actually dealing with live data now. You were doing testing, you were doing training, and yes, that's all well and good, but now you're dealing with actual stuff that's happening in real time, and that can be an extremely big learning curve for the end users. Another thing is making sure the financials, the VATs, all those um, important things can, need to be correct. So Go Live can go up to a month, maybe two in some cases, and even with larger ERPs, longer, because you need to ensure that the process, processing is done 
hundred percent before you can confirm that the implementation is correct. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Brent. Perfect. No problem. Bye. Bye.